this is a 2008 Toyota RAV4 and in this video I'm going to take you through the process of replacing the high pressure oil line for the variable valve timing. This is sometimes called the oil cooler line. This high pressure oil line for the variable valve timing is located on the timing chain side of the engine and we have to take a few things out of the way to access it. On this uh, old engine that we have in the shop which is also a 3.5 liter V6 2 GRFE you can see where this oil line is located on the engine. It is on the rear bank okay, which is bank 1 or the right hand bank and it goes uh, into the valve cover and it comes from a location on the back of the engine. This is where the high pressure oil comes from and it goes up and into the valve cover where it operates the VVT gears. Right here you can see the rubber section of this line and it extends under this cover. If you look at your engine in your car, try to get a sight at this location and if you see that it's rubber, you'll know that you need to replace the uh, oil line with an all metal line. This is what the all metal line looks like and it um, fits right in. It will fit any 2GR FE engine in any vehicle with a 2GR FE from 2005 to 2009. You can use this same part number that I am showing you here. So in addition to the oil line itself you need some washers uh, for either end of the line and I'm going to show you the part numbers for all of these. This is the gasket for one end and it's uh, clearly visible. This is the gasket for the other. It is also clearly visible right there. So the first thing you should do before ordering these parts is verify whether your car actually needs it. So let's do that. The first thing we need to do is to get the engine cover out of the way. The engine cover just pops right off. We set it aside and the oil line is right here. Now if we look at this oil line, we see that it has a rubber section. So this means that either the, the dealer never replaced this part or that they replaced it with another line with a rubber section, which is a completely stupid thing to do. Anyway, we're going to replace this line, which may or may not be original, but which has a rubber section, with the new line we have that is all metal. As you can see on this spare engine, the uh, oil line is underneath this plastic cover. And this plastic cover has two M6 bolts with a 10 millimeter hex head that has to be removed in order to remove the line. And removing this cover may very well be the hardest part of this job because on the actual car it is in a very tight location. So let's see how we can get to that. Okay, so looking down the side here, it's just possible to snake our hand through this gap without unfastening anything else. So if we can get a little socket wrench and reach down through there, we will be able to get those two bolts off from the cover and take the cover off. Let's go ahead and do that. So as I've said, we're going to reach down here with this little socket wrench, a 10 millimeter socket. We're going to locate the bolt, there it is, put the socket on it and make it loose. It just broke loose and 
after we break it loose, be able to turn it the rest of the way by hand. So here's the first bolt. So now let's do the same thing for the second bolt. First we find its location and it's just about an inch down from the edge of the valve cover. So we just broke it loose and after we break it loose we turn it the rest of the way by hand. Just using the tips of our fingers. Alright, so here is the second bolt. And now this plastic cover should come right off. Like the famous prom dress. That's it. Off like a prom dress. You might think at this point with this cover off we're done with fidgety things but we're not. There is one more fidgety little bolt to remove and it holds the oil line to the cylinder head and it's just uh, a few inches straight down from the valve cover directly underneath the oil line so let's go get that one off too okay so we're just going to follow the contour of the oil line and that leads us straight to that retaining bolt to get the ratchet wrench on it and break it loose. There we go. And here it is, the retaining bolt for the oil line. Our next step is to remove this banjo bolt that is right here on the valve cover. And that one has a 17 millimeter hex head. Let's take a look on the spare engine. So here you can see clearly where this banjo bolt is located. So here is our socket wrench with a 17 millimeter socket. And see if we can get at this. Okay, we can just kind of get on it. And we're going to need a cheater bar because these bolts on pretty tight. Let's break it loose. There we go. That took a little bit of effort. broke it loose and it just turns freely by hand once it's broken loose. Now when you remove this bolt you want to put an oil catch can on the floor or on the ground down underneath the engine because there is a good chance that some oil might drip out. And now you want to be very careful removing this because it's going to have a little oil filter on the tip of the bolt. And this filter came just part way through. And this is it. This is the little oil filter that fits on the tip of the bolt. And had we not been careful it could have fallen down and got lost. So you want to rinse this 
how to clean it off with the brake cleaner just to remove any debris or clogging that might have been accumulated over time. So to get to the rear banjo bolt, I've removed the wheel and we're going to go th right through the wheel well. Let's take a closer look. There, we're looking straight at it and it's got the same 17 millimeter head as the other banjo bolts. This is so you can see how I did it. I have this socket wrench with an extension 9 inch 17 millimeter socket cheater bar and I'm just going to reach in through here get it on the bolt. Okay, now the crucial thing is you must support your extension. You must support it. It's your fulcrum point and then you can break that bolt loose. So with both ends released this oil line should now wiggle right out. You just have to make it past everything that's in the way off in this little ground cable seems to be the only thing that it tangles so here it is here's our oil line and it's not in such a bad shape it's a little bit soft and yeah for all we know this thing could go for another hundred thousand miles but be better safe than sorry. And here's the new oil line with the oil oil line side by side. And this new oil line sure does inspire a lot more confidence than the original. So next, we are going to wiggle this into place, snaking it past these uh, It's a little bit of a puzzle. If you can't see very clearly what's going on back down there. Just have to do it to clear the frame rail. And there, we've got it more or less in place. Start by putting the top line, top end of the line back on because it's a little bit more wiggly. So we've got the banjo bolt, the filter, and we're going to replace these gaskets with the brand new gaskets. These are the two brand new gaskets. Just going to temporarily put them on the banjo bolt so they don't get lost. And I'm going to take this filter and just rinse it out real quick. Okay, so here we go. We've got the banjo bolt, we've got one gasket on one end, we've got the filter clipped into the end. Got this lined up more or less. Just lift it in. And then just have to make enough room to get the second gasket on. This part is just a little bit fiddly. 
but we can get it all back together with the filter clipped in and both banjo bolts and both gaskets on the banjo bolt there you can see it now you want to start threading this by hand okay make sure that it's threaded in cleanly the last thing you want to do is to cross thread one of these things it would be an absolute disaster if you did okay so that one is on kind of loosely right now we're going to just leave it this way until we reattach the bottom one so this is the bottom gasket and it's a, a one piece design that makes it easier to put on so we're going to raise the car back up again and put this on the banjo put it on put this on to the end of the oil line and just thread the banjo bolt through this is my shop supervisor blackie and he has just reminded me that i need to torque the banjo bolts to 48 foot pounds isn't that right blackie and these are Tiger and Popsy who lend a hand whenever needed. Isn't that right, Tiger and Popsy? There you can see the little retainer bolt back in place. And there you see that the cover with its two retaining bolts is back in place. And we have an all-metal VVT line now. So this completes the repair. Thank you for watching.